Hello and welcome to the Extended Greg YouTube channel. I'm Greg and on today's show, we're gonna be taking a look at the Stream Deck, going over a few of its capabilities and its features. So stay tuned, we're about to get extended. So today we're gonna be taking a look at the Stream Deck. In this case, I have the Stream Deck 2, which has slightly better LCD screens on each button, but is otherwise functionally the same as Stream Deck 1. This version has 15 buttons, but it is also available in 32 buttons as well. The buttons are completely programmable, so that way you can choose what functions you want them to do, and even assign macros to be able to do multiple functions with a single key press. If we look at the interface, we see that it just has the buttons laid out the same way that you would see them on the Stream Deck itself. And you can have multiple pages, and you can have multiple functions. So let's go through a few that I have already programmed here. So I have lights, the ability to turn them on and off. I have some angles that I can choose in Streamlabs. I have the ability to start and stop recording. And then I also have the ability to control PowerPoint slides by advancing or going back. And then we also have the ability to change pages. So if I press it on the Stream Deck here, we see that the interface updates simultaneously. And one of the key values of this is that you can actually go in and add plugins that are created by the manufacturer to be able to do functions that you may want to do without having to do any kind of programming at all. It's already done for you and you just have to select the options that you want. So if we open up the store, and we go to plugins, we can see there's a significant number that are available to us. And they're categorized, we're not gonna go through them today, but we are going to choose a particular plugin just to demonstrate it. So if we go to productivity and we go to mouse spotlight, we can just hit the install button. We can confirm it, and then it will immediately start installing. And we see that was very fast. So we can close out of the store, and if we scroll down in our list on the right that shows our available functions that we have installed, we can see Mouse Spotlight is at the bottom. If we click and we drag that to a button position, we see that it adds it and opens up the options below it. But we also see on our physical Stream Deck that the actual button has immediately popped up there. So a few things that we can choose here is we can choose what style, so we can do a ring, laser, etc. We'll stay on circle for now. We can choose the color. We can choose whether we want click animations. And in this case, let's go ahead and select that. And then some other things. So let's try it out. So we see that when we press the button, it pops up with a purple circle around the mouse. And when I click, we can see the little click animation on the mouse as well. And this can be very handy for trying to demonstrate things if you're doing a presentation or if you're trying to do a recording and showing actions as we're going through things. So we could see, I'll leave this on for a second. It's nice, but we don't like the circle. So if we wanted to change that, we can click and we can do a ring spotlight. Now we do have to disable this and re-enable it, but we see that it changed the actual format and it was very quick and easy to do. And we can disable that. We can still go back to our previous page. We can go to our new page. And we've just configured a new button to be able to perform an action that we may want to do. And we can continue to do that for different actions on all of the other buttons and create as many pages as we wish. So if we wanted to, we could create a new page. We see by default, it does not have a significant amount of navigation. But for example, I like it to show the forward button, the back button, and the current page number. So we can go to the navigation window over here and we can choose to put in next page and page indicator. And that will show us the current page number. So as we scroll back through, it will tell us the page number. And obviously if there's no page to go back to, it won't show it, but it definitely makes it a lot easier in terms of keeping track of where you are, even though it does cost some buttons in order to do it. So not only does it have the ability to integrate with third-party applications, it also has the ability to do some very low-level functionality for custom integration. So if we go back into the store and we do developer tools, we see it can do standard web requests, it can do API requests, it can do WebSocket proxy, things of that nature that can definitely make it so you can integrate with things that don't ex have existing plugins. 
and be able to make custom applications and custom software to be able to integrate with this as well. So there's a lot of flexibility there to be able to really make it do whatever you want. So that way it can act as an aid with some at hand buttons to be able to perform the functions that make your life easier without having to be repetitious through a bunch of clicks or key commands. So now that we've added the button to be able to highlight our mouse pointer, let's try adding something else. So we see under system, we can actually add a text macro. This will allow us to be able to enter some text that we can recall with a single button press. So let's say we want, hello world. Now we can choose to press enter after the message, but in this case, let's just leave it as this. And we're gonna add a title and we're gonna call it hello world. We're just gonna call it hello. If you actually try and type world, you'll see that it will start going off of the edge of the screen. So we're just gonna leave it as hello. So now if we go and we open up a web browser, we can then go through and using our hello button, we can press it and it will immediately pop up with the text that we chose to put in there. And obviously if we had it hit enter for us, it would have automatically searched. But this is just a demonstration of some of the capability that's available by using macros on the Stream Deck. Now, something I wanna show you as well is how to program buttons that have certain modes. A lot of buttons for, in particular, plugins will have an on mode and an off mode. And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna use the multi-action switch just cause we could do it without modifying anything. Now, just for background, the multi-action switch will actually allow you to stack multiple types of regular options that you would usually assign to an individual key press and be able to activate them all at once. But we're not gonna go into that too detailed here, but I will show you the two button states. So we have the ability to be able to set an icon from a file, to be able to create a new icon using their website, or to open the Stream Deck icon library and be able to choose a particular icon. So if we wanted to have it be a robot, we could choose to do that. And we can choose the other state, which looks like a grayed out robot. And we could change that to something else, but in this case, we're gonna leave it as it is. So if we actually look at the Stream Deck itself with the robot displayed, if we press the button, we can see it runs its required actions, and then it changes to the opposite state. So in this case, it's a grayed out version of the robot. So it's an easy way to have a heads up display on exactly what the current button state is. And that definitely makes it a lot easier to operate without having to have additional text or display showing on the screen, telling you what the status is. So this is just a broad overview of some of the functions that are available inside of the Stream Deck. And the options are endless because you can program whatever you want to do using a numerous amount of plugins. So you can really take a lot of the functions that would take a lot of key presses and a lot of mouse clicks and make it so it's a single button press. And that can be a very powerful tool for making your workflow more efficient. Thanks for watching the video today. If you'd like to see more videos like this, check out this playlist right here. Also, if you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And then hit that notification bell. That way you know the next time we're getting extended. So until then, take care.